Hey guys, so it's been a hot minute since I have uh, done an update and we probably should start by addressing the elephant in the room and that is that uh, we've got a bit of a change happening here. A lot of people have asked like, why did you do that? <laughs> then a lot of people are like, wow, it looks great. So thank you to those people. Great question. I think that it's something that I thought about doing for a long, long time. I used to be dark or I had dark hair like 10 years ago. So I guess every 10 years I have a bit of a, we'll call it like a midlife crisis and that happens again in 10 years. You just want some change. <laughs> I uh, committed and my hair is probably going to be healthier, that's for sure. But I also feel like it's very symbolic for quite a number of reasons. And I guess I haven't updated you in probably four months is <laughs> what it feels like. And I have honestly just been going through a whole lot of change. I think physically, how my body looks, <laughs> mentally, thinking back five years ago, how I used to be, my mindset, how I felt about myself to now. And I think that change was kind of on the cards. I feel like I needed a new identity. The old identity, the blonde Holly, probably had a lot of insecurities, if I'm being really honest. And I know uh, many of you have probably watched my uh, video from, I think it was 2020, where I shared one of the most difficult things, you know, I've ever had to go through. And that was all to do with my eating disorder. There was a little bit of uh, information in there about my upbringing, the way things were that led to, you know, how I was able to come, kind of overcome that. I think being blonde, it gave me like a false sense of confidence. It was almost like, hey, you know, I, I feel like I'm worthy with this hair color and I feel like I'm, I'm happy and, you know, I, I like myself as a blonde. And then, you know, if I didn't have that, it was like, well, you know, now I, that's all that's all taken away. But that is so superficial and it's not real. I guess towards the end of 2021, a friend of ours, actually uh, someone that works in the company, invited me to go along to church with her. And I grew up in Tasmania, Australia, and I don't really know of many people that were, I guess, in my school or our family friends um, that were religious or believed in God. I remember learning a little about it when I was at school. We had scripture. I remember going to scripture class in like prep. So we've learned a little bit about it, but it wasn't something that was mandatory. I didn't go to like a Catholic school or uh, anything like that. So I know that I've grown up and I was raised in an environment where I didn't really have a strong mentor or somebody that I could look to that I, you know, trusted and that could give me answers. I think without that, as I look back, you know, historically on, you know, my behaviors and my beliefs, I kind of sought to the information that I was given, you know, by family members, friends. And I think that somewhere along the lines, my wires got really crossed. And I started thinking that in order to be something or to be cared about or to be loved or to be worthy, I needed to do things for people and that I needed to be a certain way. And all of a sudden, for me, I've only just started to discover a lot of this stuff in the last couple of years that everything that I did was for someone else to impress or to be liked. And that's so wrong. It's so wrong. And it really um, kind of upset me thinking about, you know, the, the reasons that I have done certain things for, you know, the course of my life. And consequently, if you don't believe in yourself, if you don't love who you are, or you don't feel like you are enough, especially if you are trying to perform and you don't meet someone's standards. And of course, we all know it is inevitable you know as we go through life we are going to fail at things and nothing is ever going to be perfect I had this standard set for myself that was basically never going to be fulfilled. I've kind of traveled around for my whole life. You know, I left home at 17, uh, went to college. It was kind of like I was in search for something, search for my purpose, search for my why, because I didn't feel like I fit in. I didn't feel like, I'm like, there must be more to life. And I remember, you know, I told my mom, hey, I think I might want to, you know, go and do college somewhere else. And what was really funny was, and now that I reflect back on this, I went off to college and I had acquaintances, I wouldn't say that they were all necessarily good friends because we were just so busy. I mean, I was studying, I was working three jobs, but I don't really ever feel like I had a connection. And it's hard, you know, when you travel and you move somewhere, I think many of you might have experienced that in your own lives, where it's hard to kind of insert yourself, especially the older you get, the more established you become. It's really challenging. I kind of went through that. I was in Melbourne for quite a number of years uh, for college and uh, my master's degree. And then I kind of got done and I was like, well, well what now? Like, what, what's next? And I think that's one of the really key things for me is that I've always been chasing and trying to find the next thing and the next thing. And constantly throughout this whole time, always felt unfulfilled, always felt like, you know, it wasn't enough, that there must be more. So I moved, I went to Queensland, you know, in search for, you know, whatever this was, like something just, I felt like I had a huge 
gaping hole like in my heart. I'm like, this, this can't be it. And the struggles that I had with that were that I was suffering severely with depression at that time. I was really uh, unhappy because of this feeling that I had that I was just never going to fit. That has continued on and off throughout the course of my adulthood. And in my video from 2020, where I talked about you know my struggles with my eating disorder, binge eating, bulimia, I think that part of that was you know because of how I have been brought up, always trying to impress and be the best, and felt like nothing. It was all everything was always conditional on your performance. And I think that the eating disorder had become the only way that I felt like I could get happiness. It was like food was the only comfort, which is incredibly sad because I didn't feel like I had anyone to go to. I didn't feel like I had my people. I didn't feel like I was established. And it honestly wasn't until I went to church just some eight months ago and was, you know, reading some of the scriptures and our pastor was amazing. Like, you know, very progressive church, uh, non-denominational, just amazing, welcoming, happy, you know, giving like all the things that I was like, oh my God, these are my people. <laughs> so I really feel like I have had a massive transformation mentally more than anything. And again, just relating this back to the physical change, the hair color and whatnot, it's like, hey, I need a new identity. Like that is not me, that, that person, she struggled. She was sad, she was unhappy. And now I feel like, you know, I've, I found what I was missing. And it was, you know, the search for the truth, the search for why. And it's like a huge weight has been lifted from me because I now know that, you know, I am loved, I am enough, I am worthy. It's not conditional based on, you know, how lean I am or, you know, how perfect my hair is or how da 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 da, insert whatever it is that you feel like you struggle with. That was so liberating for me and I think it's really just launched me into this new pathway of like self-development and improving and righting wrongs that I have done in my past. And I think for a long time, I felt really guilty about certain things and kind of seeing how things should be done and what the right thing is and, you know, how to treat people and all of these. To me, like now I'm just going, okay, this is all just common sense. But I think we all tend to get so caught up in the hustle and bustle and the busyness of life that sometimes you just gotta take a little bit of a step back and it's like, oh, this is so clear. Here's where I'm going wrong. Here are the things that I should be focusing on and here should be my priorities. And the result of that has meant I haven't been doing a whole lot of filming <laughs> because I've been doing a whole lot of reading and learning and reprioritizing, you know, the things that I do with my time. And so much of that have been working on this. And so much of that was because here, didn't really believe that I was gonna ever be happy or that I couldn't be enough if I was, you know, heavier or not as lean. Like I had, I had this idea that I needed to be perfect. And uh, I don't think that anymore. And it's so, so comforting. And this year is the first year that I can say like outside of competition that my body weight hasn't experienced the huge fluxes anymore. And it's because I let go. So I really struggled during 2020 when COVID happened because it was the first time that I had time to really work on myself and to start challenging some of those beliefs and you know making some serious change and really solidifying the mindset that I needed to overcome my disordered eating and poor relationship with food. It's interesting how that all came about because you know a lot of people have asked, hey, you know, what do you feel about the all in approach as far as you know recovering and healing from disordered eating or an eating disorder i think it's it's a choice it's like it's a tool that you could use to help you recover and i think for me i had to go through that I had had so many limitations and restrictions and you know good and bad mentality and I'm honestly an extremist. I truly I truly was and I'm trying to work away from that. I am. But because of that crazy rigidity that I had in my mind, the only way that I could bring down those foods from the pedestal I had set them on for years and had restricted and couldn't have or always had to be controlled. It was like overwhelming. It was like <gasps> all these I was so excited to try all these new foods and now all of a sudden like out of pure excitement it was like I can't control myself anymore like so I did gain so much weight I put on like 30 pounds during that time frame and it's also thankfully I was like I'm going to use this as a build so that was kind of how I would get through that it wasn't justifying you know gaining weight it was more like okay you know what this is going to be a challenge road ahead I'm going to use this to the best of my ability I know it's going to be tough and 
it was one of the hardest things that I have ever had to go through. Eating, maybe going through moments or phases of binge eating, which for anyone that has struggled from that or is still struggling from that, you can get to the point where you don't even feel like you're present in your body. It's like you are just looking down on this physical body as it's just on autopilot. And it's like you can't even escape. It's like you've got part of your brain going, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, this isn't okay. And like tr just trying to get yourself back into, you know, having some mindfulness and present and, you know, choosing that food, you know, with intention. It felt near impossible. And that was like 15 years of like restriction flooding back through. So I knew it was gonna be timely. I knew that it was going to be really, really difficult and I just had to accept it. And then the hardest thing again was not then compensating, either purging or purging with exercise to make up for how much I had just eaten. So I just decided one day I wasn't gonna do it anymore. I was like, you're not gonna do it. I think part of the thing was once I had decided that I was not going to purge anymore, that's when things started to get better. I just had to, I just had to. I had to be okay with the consequence of overeating and blowing up into a little balloon. But that was one of the key things, was not ever purging again. And it really reduced the amount of binging that I, I would do because it was like, you have this unconscious thought in the back of your head is, if you know that you can purge after, what is the uh, motivation to stop eating? So as soon as I committed to that, things really did get better. Looking back on the last eight months and just really thinking back over it and reflecting on all the things that have you know happened over the course of my life, I can say that it has been almost harder going through this admitting stage where, you know, I probably had a lot of denial for a long time and then just welcoming that back in, but not having any judgments, approaching those things with curiosity rather than, you know, um, being upset or, you know, having hatred for myself. And it's just like been a cascade of positive changes and really working on my mindset. And we recently went to a convention which we got the opportunity to listen to a neuroscientist and she has done a lot of research on the brain-body um, connection. And what I found absolutely fascinating from that was that we actually have the ability to control and change our conscious mind and our behavior. And to me, I've kind of always, you know, as a scientist, I'm curious about it. I'm like, yes, I think that's possible. But with so many like relapses or what felt like me failing again or, you know, going back into a bout of depression or going back into this uncomfortable negative mindset about my body, but seeing how quickly I could pull myself back out of that than how I used to be able to recover, it really gave me a sense of hope. And it has continuously gotten better and better, but it's taken a lot of thought and one of the key things that this scientist actually spoke about was practicing a thought. So if you practice that thought for about 60 days, we can basically take it from being just conscious thought to our unconscious, subconscious mind, to our non-conscious mind. And she actually showed some really fascinating pictures of the brain during thought and they look like little trees with little branches, I guess, and the little branches represent like the thought that is happening. And in one of her trials, uh, she had a handful of depressed participants, people that were clinically diagnosed with depression. And you could see their brain on their MRI scans, certain parts of the brain lit up that were very red. And then they went through this therapy where there's a lot of, I guess, CBT therapy and just different types of work on your conscious thoughts and mindset that then by the end of the study, they rescan their brain Brains, and you can see now different parts of their brains are lit up and almost totally green as opposed to being red when they started. And they also show us the little you know, trees and the branches and they had actual video footage inside the brain as thoughts are you know, popping up. And you can see these really protruding thoughts that were significantly bigger than the rest. And you see over the course of that study, those thoughts are kind of changing and you see new ones popping up. And as that was happening, the subjects are all, you know, subjectively saying, I feel better, I am happy, I, you know, my sense of sadness has improved. Like, you know, they go through all of these different measurements and their clinical depression uh, basically was, you know, improved. That gives me so much hope and for anybody out there that is really struggling with whether it is binge eating disorder, bulimia, they are really struggling with their self-image, their body confidence, um, depression, anxiety. I have both of those things and I have suffered with all those things as well. So it's going to take a lot of work 
And for me, the last several months has really been about changing my thoughts, rewiring what I used to believe and saying it again and again and again. And I'm, you know, we'll hear people talk about, you know, affirmations and like, you know, if you don't believe it, like it's never gonna change. But that's the thing, you have to start with a thought and you have to repeat it and repeat it. And I am convinced the more you do it and if you can do it consistently enough and her research suggests about 63 days specifically for that change to become permanent and you now have a new mindset. So that's kind of where I have been. I've been spending a lot of time on me realizing that, hey, I have a whole new life to live. One that isn't clouded with self-doubt and, you know, low self-esteem and, you know, just not, not believing that I will ever be happy. So much of it has been just finding a mentor, which was going to church and finding God, which is so weird for me to say. Uh, not that I've ever, you know, judged people that went to church or religious, not at all. It's just so unusual for me to say that. Yeah, it's like the, the mentor that I had never had. And you know, every week I'll listen to their scriptures. I actually do sometimes online, sometimes I go in person, but it's just so nice. It's like every Sunday I'm guaranteed this wonderful reminder of this. It might be like forgiveness or it might be something about, I don't know, giving or happiness or we've just done a whole module on mental health. It's translated from the Bible to today's age that is so relatable and like we're in our church talking about Instagram and selfies and like our pastor was literally talking about like influences and you know just different mindsets and then redirecting it back to okay but what's your why and what should we be focusing on and just all these positive things that have been overwhelmingly helpful for me. So all's to say change has been on the cards <laughs> for me and uh, it's really kind of helped me find my new identity, I guess, and what my priorities really are. And that's a nice little segue, I guess, into what I have been working on in our business lately. And that is all of our changes and upgrades to our new workout builder platform. We've just reintroduced reps, which is research explained in practical summaries. It's, we've, we've been working really hard behind the scenes and building and developing our team. I know when I first came over here and met Lane, you know, he was in number one, like he was, he's, that's it. it was just him and he had like a lot of different kind of opportunities kind of presented to him so we've and you know they kind of all started similarly and they've kind of all grown in a really weird way so we've kind of going back to our foundations and we're fixing the foundations we are start like if you don't have a strong foundation you will not have a strong home and you know it goes for our, our companies too and the people that are in it so we've been really rebuilding trying to make the positive changes that we know we need so that we can build a skyscraper <laughs> and the skyscraper is coming along really, really well. I've got such an awesome team. I know you guys don't see Brian behind the camera, but he's a badass, awesome. He has lost like 50 pounds. Is that right, Brian? Yes, 50 pounds. Uh, using like Carbon Diet Coach and just listening into all of the information that, you know, Lane and I uh, and our team uh, share with you guys. So, you know, we, this is, <laughs> could get emotional. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just so excited by what I know we are gonna be bringing to you guys. We've just launched our Spring Into Summer Challenge. I really hope that you guys have been able to enjoy the journey. I guess some of you have been long time followers for the last five years and have probably seen some huge shifts and changes. And I hope that you stick around for all of the awesome tools and resources that we're gonna be bringing you guys because we really wanna have platforms, programs, services that are holistic. I think so many of us just get focused on the, the shred and the get lean and you know the the physical you'll start to see a shift in my content a lot more towards how important your mindset is because you can work with the best coach in the world but if your mind isn't willing to change or accept and do some of that work you will never get to a place of happiness and I used to be convinced that the only way I was going to be happy or that my marriage would work or that you know my family would be awesome or my business I'd be good in business is if I looked a certain way and then I just started saying you can have an amazing holiday with your girlfriends, whatever your size, like they don't care what you look like. They're there for the memories, the fun, the experiences. For those of you that are currently working on your physique change and maybe your health too, don't forget about your mental health because that can make a world of difference. I undervalued it for my entire life. And I wish that someone had, would have said to me when I was like 15 years old, get a therapist, go and get a mentor, go and talk to somebody that has good advice that can tell you the truth, tell you right from wrong, because 
it can truly change your life. It's changing mine right now. I'm very, very happy with <laughs> other changes that I have experienced and truly feel like a whole new person. So not to ramble along too much, but that's kind of been what's going on with my life. Usually I do one of my uh, check-ins using carbon on my phone, but if I was to pull up carbon for you right now, I can tell you there's not gonna be a single thing tracked in it. My tracking, I think I've probably had three months of inconsistent tracking. There might be a couple of things that I entered in and then I was like, yeah, it's not, no point. Because it wasn't my focus. So I can't tell you what my calories are. I've been trying to just maintain some protein in my diet, but also eating for health. Thinking about what foods make me feel good and you know, reflecting back on like the binge eating. Um, there are certain foods that I don't feel good and if I eat too much, I don't feel good. So I've really been paying attention to that and really learning how to eat with intention and mindfulness uh, rather than looking at my numbers and you know just focusing on the aesthetic. It's really been about like relearning my body, <laughs> which is really strange, but I don't have any macros to show you. I've still been training a little bit. Again, that hasn't been my priority and now having had experienced what I've experienced for the last couple of months, which is very erratic. I'll start a training session and then I've got something blowing up on my phone. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm leaving the gym right now. So I haven't had a whole lot of consistent with my training and I haven't felt good. I've been doing a lot of late nights trying to get some things together with our companies and uh, I think I'm finally at a point now where I am ready to get back to a little bit of self-care in the physical way where it relates to exercise and training. So my goals are to do four days of training a week, 60 minutes, that's it. Try to do it without distractions. So as nice as it is to have music, I actually haven't been taking my phone. I'm just going to the gym so I don't have any distractions and I have to do what I came there to do. So for anyone that gets distracted in the gym, try not responding to emails, turn your notifications off, do the work. It's amazing how much more enjoyable it is because I was hating training because I'm like in there trying to do a leg press and I'm like, God damn it, someone's calling me. So yeah, that was a huge change for me, but I'm excited to be getting back to it. And I'm gonna be joining in the 12 weeks spring into summer challenge to help me stay accountable, to get me back into some good healthy habits uh, around you know my nutrition and my training. So we've got lots of cardio programs coming. I'm gonna be throwing some of those back in there just to help get my fitness back because I do love feeling fit. There's nothing better than having like energy all the time. So I'm gonna be doing some of that. But guys, if you've got any questions at all from today's video, please feel free to leave me a comment. I know this is a bit of a diatribe and we're all over the place, but truly my life is so entangled and it's like a big web. They're all connected in some way. Church is connected with business, is connected with family, marriage, our kids, our, our staff. And then of course, you know, my personal goals are all wrapped up in that as well. So got questions, I'll try and answer for you. I hope that that was a nice little uh, hello, welcome back to the planet video. Uh, but until next time, I hope you have a fantastic week ahead. Get after your training. I hope you join the challenge and I'll see you again soon.